Hello once again folks, how you all doing? Uh, so, time to give you an update on where I am with the new layout build. Uh, I've been busy messing around with polystyrene as you can see, getting it all stuck in place and trying to keep it all level. It's a bit rough and ready looking at the moment, but uh, understand this is just a base. Um, you know, there'll be plaster and static grass and all sorts going on to it, so it'll be fine when it eventually gets done. After my last update, uh, a lot of you suggested using adjustable feet to help with, uh, you know, keeping the boards level. Um, yeah, I was thinking along those lines, but uh, I wasn't keen on the idea of fitting ones under the legs and, uh, you know, having them sink into the carpet a bit. And, uh, you know, that, that would mean having to fiddle with a spanner or, or grips under the legs. Um, been there, done that, and don't like it very much. Um, so I kind of decided to wait and just see how the whole, you know, see how it all worked out and how big an issue it was going to be. Um, and maybe just shove some wee wedges under any legs that needed lifted. So I found these on Amazon. Um, now these fit onto the outside of the legs, not underneath. Um, so I can retrofit these and uh, it's going to be much easier to, you know, to, to access them to, to make any adjustment. So um, I think what I'll do is I'm just going to keep building the layout just now. Um, but once we start getting weight onto it, we'll see how big a, a problem that is. But I can always uh, screw these onto to the legs and make some fine adjustments if required. This is my viaduct that was built from the, the Metcalf kit. Um, it's not fixed in place yet. Um, you know, obviously I, I need to get the track in place to, you know, get a proper fix on exactly how this will sit, because it might have to be at a bit of an angle, I'm not too sure. Um, one thing that does concern me about this a little is I think it's a little bit too narrow. Um, you know, once I've got the tracks in there, mm, I'm a little bit, uh, yeah, I might have to actually bring the, the tracks just a little bit closer than they should be. Um, but we'll see once we get the uh, the track down. So you might be thinking that the open space in the middle of the layout here is uh, is fairly big. Uh, yes, it is. And that was quite intentional. Um, you know, looking at the plan there, I really didn't want to be crammed in with, with no space to move because I want to be able to get uh, underneath the baseboards and maybe have room for one or two people in there as well. So, you know, I didn't want to build too small a space. Um, but once the layout's sort of complete, or got to a certain level of completion anyway, uh, I'm toying with the idea of having uh, sort of plug-in sections that'll come out of it, uh, maybe here and possibly in there, um, just to get some more buildings and some roads and stuff in. So they won't have any trains or anything running on them. They'll purely just be, you know, for some buildings and some landscape detail. Um, I'll probably just uh, make them out of a polystyrene board to make them nice and light so they're easy to to, to take out and shove back in. Uh, I'll just have to devise a way to, to plug them in. Um, but I want to be able to remove them so I've got, got easy access to the other side of the board if I need to, to work on the other side. Um, I'll maybe build something out here as well. So the next step is to do a test layout of all the track. Uh, here's some of the track from the old layout that I've uh, cleaned all the ballast off, cleaned up all my points. I'm going to have to buy some, some more points and a few more bits of track and some, some new flexi track. Um, but, you know, I need to do a sort of a test run of the layout. Just uh, lay it all out in position, make sure it all fits um, as per the plan or more or less. Uh, <laughs> you know, what you plan and what you actually build will invariably be two different things, but uh, we'll see. Um, I do have concerns about this section here. Um, so yeah, how this is quite going to work out when I, when I lay the track, we'll, we'll need to see. But I think it should be okay, I'm not anticipating too many problems. So all my points are Hornby standard insole frog points. Um, a lot of people have uh, suggested or a couple of people even told me to use Pico Electro Frog Points. It'll be one of these things. You know, my requirements uh, are not the same as others might be. Um, Electro Frog Points are, are fine for newish locomotives, um, but not for old trying beasts. Um, you know, and I've got uh, Trying, Dublo, Lima, Bachman, Hornby, uh, um, Jouf models, you know, and 
I never know what I'm going to be, have to run. You know, if I'm repairing a locomotive for someone, I never know what I might have to run. So I need to make sure that uh, my layout can handle, you know, as wide a range of, of locomotives as possible. Plus the layout's going to have 19 points. So, you know, I'm going to have to buy some new ones in addition to these ones. But if I was to replace them all, it would cost me an absolute fortune. Um, but the main reason is just to, you know, ensure I can run old trying locomotives. Even with these Hornby standard points, I filed down the frogs. So I'll take a file and I, I deepen the groove to make sure that the uh, larger flanged wheels will go through them okay, because otherwise they jump. But I did buy this point um, just to see if the, uh, the older wheels would cope. And no, they don't, not very well. Um, plus, the, you know, the other issue with these is it's a different geometry. If I was to replace all my points with these, it would completely change my layout design. So I'm just not going there and I'm sticking with these. So as I say, the next job really is to uh, do a dummy layout of all the track uh, just to see how it all fits. Um, I'll probably wire up the, the two main loops as well to uh, test run a locomotive round. Um, the track won't be glued down. I'll probably, um, for the flexible sections, uh, I'll probably use some screws just to keep them in place. Um, and then once I'm happy with it, I'll mark it all out with a marker pen on, onto the polystyrene um, so I can lift it all again and I'll know where everything goes. Um, I, I probably will wire up the, the two main loops to test run trains rounds just to see how it runs, um, see if the, the levelling is going to be an issue, the joins on the uh, uh, removable sections um yeah they'll need to be engineered a little bit once I, once i know exactly where the, the track's going to go um i'll probably put some pieces of wood underneath or something just to make sure that they've got a, a good solid uh, base to to be glued to another thing i'll need to think about doing soon is building some kind of control center um i'm not going to be using the hornby lever switches this time i'm just going to go for the toggle switches so i'm going to build a sort of control panel um, I'll still be using my Morley controller and I'll probably still use the old Hornby controller uh, just for powering all the points and stuff, just as I did on, on my old layout. I don't think I'll be uh, splashing out on any new controllers or anything, not at this point anyway. I may use a different shuttle actually for, for the shuttle that I'm going to put in. I may, uh, I may try a different one. Anyway, right, okay, that's you up to date. I'll catch you later folks.